the trailer to the Netflix adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender has finally released. And I am quite thrilled about it, as I believe are most people judging from fan reactions. I do not have a strictly prepared script, so apologies, I will not be making references to Aristotle or William James because I have no philosophical content prepared. I will just provide my thoughts on this new live action adaptation, what it looks like it's doing right, and why I'm optimistic about it and really examine the little secrets and intricacies that this trailer reveals that might not be apparent upon first glance. So, we see all of our important characters. We see Aang looking very small and young and passionately innocent. We see Katara, all clad in her water tribe robes and looking quite good, quite thoughtful, quite fitting the world of the show. Sokka looks charming, Zuko looks pensive, Iroh looks contemplative, Ozai looks threatening. Everyone looks as they ought. I do not really see a lot of grounds on which a purist could complain that the live action adaptation is diverging from the template set by the animated show. Now that of course raises the question of why this show needs to exist in the first place. For books, at least, there is an argument to be made for a hyper-literal adaptation, considering that it is still an act of creation, because one medium, the written word, is being transferred into another medium, a visual medium that is innately different. But... To a certain extent, I have a lot of the same questions that people have regarding the Disney live-action remakes. Those films are mostly pretty bad. Avatar hopefully will not be. But the same question persists. Why does this need to exist? What is the benefit to watching this over just watching the animated show for the 30th time? as I am doing right now, actually. And I don't have a clear answer to that. But I do think that the show is able to evade questions of this sort to a certain extent because of the presence of the rather bad M. Night Shyamalan movie. When I was younger, I was ardently opposed to even watching that film, how horrific it was, how much it disgraced the purity of the original animated show. My passion has died down on that front to an extent. I think it's a bit silly to be so up in arms about an inoffensive but bad and uninspired movie. But nonetheless, Having a better live-action adaptation of Avatar, if nothing else, has the function of kind of cleansing the franchise of its previous failed foray into live-action. You can strike a contrast between the bad first attempts to make an adaptation and the later better attempts. It corrects a wrong done in the past. So to that extent, it has a justification for existing. And I do believe that on that front, 
fans will probably be more receptive of the live action if it is at least good than they otherwise would be because they have the terrible M. Night Shyamalan movie to contrast against. If the only two versions are the original show, which is a masterpiece, and a live action adaptation, then the live action adaptation will be inevitably compared to the original, and those comparisons might not be entirely favorable because, again, the original show is a masterpiece. But because there is this other rather laughable live action adaptation of Avatar, this new adaptation will be primarily compared to the M. Night Shyamalan movie, and because of that, it will be looked upon much more favorably. But regarding the little secrets and intricacies that this trailer reveals, there are quite a few. I love the shot we get of Azula. The live action show has a difficult balance to strike with Azula because necessarily she is going to be more childlike than in the original show, but she is going to have to be just as menacing. I know a lot of people were completely shocked the first time they watched Avatar to learn that Azula was Zuko's younger sister. She does not act like a typical 14 year old. Now that is part of the character, I don't think that's a flaw of the original show. But nonetheless, she is voiced by an adult and she is voiced in the original with this rather darkly alluring, almost sultry delivery by Grey Delisle that is a bit uncomfortable considering how young Azula is. That especially combined with her elaborate makeup makes her look significantly older than she really is. The live action will necessarily have to address Azula's being the younger sister. She looks younger in this live action adaptation because she has to. That is part of the point of adapting into live action is that you get actual actors faces and if you have Azula be Zuko's younger sister she is going to actually look younger. The question is whether she can actually be menacing and domineering in the way that Azula is and we see only a brief glimpse of her in the trailer but early indications seem positive. We also seem to be getting a rather grim depiction of the genocide of the airbenders. That happened under Sozin's rule, where he exterminated an entire race of people in order to attempt to kill the Avatar and failed. Obviously, they're not going to go full hyper-realist, graphic, bloody gore chaos on this front, but it seems appropriately grim in this live-action depiction. We see Suki in her makeup. That... I think it's done quite well. It looks both like Suki in the original and not ridiculous in live action. Thumbs up. Momo and Appa look more questionable. People have said the CGI might be refined on those two characters between now and the time the show comes out in February, maybe, perhaps. 
I'm fine with how they look now, but they do look a bit out of place. But to a certain extent, that's not really a problem with the show in live action as much as it is just innate to trying to create these fantastical characters in this live action world. Speaking of the world, it does look a bit bleaker than I expected. Part of the beauty and elemental power of the original show is that it is, on one hand, this rather grim and fragmented depiction of a broken world that has been paralyzed and desiccated by a century of war, leaving shattered families and lonely, uncertain individuals desperately wanting to hope for a better future, but uncertain whether that better future can actually arrive. It is that, but it's also enjoyable and playful. The colors are vibrant and lush. There is this real intrinsic energy and vitality to the show that is apparent even in a lot of its bleakest moments. And I hope that the live action show will be able to carry that mix of dark, somber realism in depicting the aftermath of this war with a genuine sense of joy and playfulness and exuberance. I'm not pessimistic necessarily, but I do think the tones and the colors are a bit dimmer and drabber than I would prefer. Now it could be that's not really the case in the finished show. We don't know a lot from this trailer. And also, inevitably, the colors are not going to pop in the same way that they do in the animated show. That's just a function of switching mediums. But I do hope that they succeed at making the show feel lighthearted and playful, at least in its early episodes. Because they are still kids. They still want to try to enjoy themselves, especially Aang, and to a lesser extent Sokka, but even Katara to an extent, who is tasked with the burden of being the responsible one, the mother figure. Even she has this desire to enjoy herself for once, even if she suppresses it. But I don't want to sound pessimistic about the live action. It looks good. I can't really think of a lot of grounds on which someone would object to this. We get everything from Omashu to the moment when Aang discovers that his people are dead to the Kyoshi Warriors, a lot of the iconic occurrences and moments that people love about season one are here. I think that if you are a longtime fan of Avatar, or even if you just discovered it on Netflix a couple years back, you will be drawn in by this trailer, and you will probably be drawn in by the show as well. It looks promising. I like what we see of the interactions between the characters. There is that real sense of family and community between Sokka, Aang, and Katara already, and I appreciate that. There is only so much that we can tell from this opening trailer, and I will have much more to say when the actual show releases, but from now, from this point, 
I like what we see. I think it is a positive sign, and I think it's right to be optimistic about the future of this franchise and the future of this live action adaptation. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this before anyone else does. Keep watching Avatar the Animated Show. Whatever happens with the live action, the original show remains a classic filled with all these ideas about war and loss and cultural fragmentation evoked with detailed, intricate character dynamics that feel so lush and so visceral. So anyway, tune in soon for the next analysis. It will be coming soon. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.